and hello everyone welcome back to another Lua tutorial so in this tutorial we'll be talking about OOP take note everything I'm teaching in this tutorial could be split into modules so where one object which we'll go into detail later can be in one file and we'll be using this during the game dev section of this course but for right now it's not too important I'm going to keep everything in one file to keep it simple now, what exactly is OOP? OOP is Object Orientated Programming. It is when you think of your code as objects. For example, you have a car that's an object. A car could have wheels. A car could drive. A car could do this. You have a pit. You could have a cat pit. You could be able to feed your pit. You could be able to give your pet a name because a pet is just an object. You could have a cup. A cup is just an object that you could fill with water. That's the whole idea behind OOP. Everything in your code is an object. Some people love OOP, some people hate it. I personally love OOP when doing game development, but prefer using procedural programming basically what we've been doing up until now with normal programs. Now in Lua, there are multiple ways to do OOP. There's not just one, not just two, there's more. I'm going to show you one way to do it, but if you don't like this method, you could go and search for a different method that you might like more. There's one that uses meta tables, but I find that method to be very confusing to understand and a bit difficult to use. So instead, I like to use functions and simulate OOP with them. And I'll show you an example. Let's create a object, local function pit. This is your pit. Now your pit could be a dog or a cat, but this is a pit. It is what you use when you go, Charlie, come here, I have a treat for you. You're calling your pit. And we will return a table because a table is the best way to get an object. If you maybe come from Python or from JavaScript, then dictionaries or objects, it would be the same concept. And here we could do something like name is equal to Charlie. Then here we could go and say local pet or even cat is equal to pet. And then we could print cat.name. Anything inside of this return is public and can be used with this object. Now, if we were to run this, we get Charlie because this is just a table. But we disguise it as a function which generates an object for us. This is nice because now I could have two pets, one that's a dog. And now I could go dog.name. Both of them will be Charlie, so this pet is a bit flawed. Let's allow us to change the name. So name, we'd say name is equal to name or Charlie. So if they don't enter a name, it will default to Charlie. Here we could say Jack. So my pet is called Jack. Now my cat is Charlie, my dog is Jack. On the end of the day, these are just a bunch of tables. But we can create or generate tables for us by calling functions. So that's pretty neat. Now take note, if something is not in this return, it won't be returned for us to use. So if I go age is equal to 10, I cannot use this age here. I could use it here. So I could go days alive is equal to age times 365. There we go. Now here, I can't go cat age and then dog days alive. Only dog will return a value because age is not returned. Only the things in returned is returned. Also, we can just go local here. So if I were to run this, we'll get nil and 3650. That is because age is not returned. So we don't know what it is. This can be seen as a private property. 
of your object. So something you can use only in your object and it cannot be used outside of it. And this here could be seen as a public property that can be used and called outside of this object. You then also have two types of functions. You have the speak and this function is just a normal function and we can just say print and let's just go meow uh, even if it's a dog let's just say it meows then you also have another function which we could call feed so if you want to feed this pet that can be a function that takes in self and we'll discuss it in a second and for now right now we don't have to do anything here we can just say print okay so here we have a basic class with two types of functions. This first function here can be called with this dot syntax, so speak. And it doesn't return anything, so we don't have to print it. But you take note, this second function, so we go feed here, will not work because it takes in self. And self is what you use to specify this object this right here. This is the self. It is this table. Self is referring to this table. It's referring to itself. But this won't work. So if we run this, we'll get meow and eating. But we go self.name and we try and run it now. We'll get an error because self is a nil value. So once we want to use self here, which allows us to reference anything inside of this table, we cannot use this dot syntax anymore. We have to use a colon. Colon basically passes dog into itself in a sense. So this first value here is going to be this here. So if we go here and we run this, we get eating and then Jack. So these are the two functions you'll usually get. I usually just say, make all of them include self, even if you're not using self, because then all of your functions will require a colon and you'll never have to wonder, ah, is this function not working because it needs a dot or a colon? It will always need a colon. So I always say, include self, even if you're not using self. And in self here can be used to access any value inside of this right here. So I can go self, speak and now we can speak we run this we get meow eating jack and then meow that is the basics of these types of functions but usually just stick with self and you won't have to memorize what the other does now let's say you want a type of pet that isn't in its own a pet or it is a pet object but it's more specific than that this is called inheritance so let's say I want another type of object. So local function dog, right? Dog takes a name, but now we go return and we are like, okay, I want all of these inside of dog as well. So we copy, we paste. We now have all of the same things, but now we want to add a few new things. We want to add breed, which is equal to Doberman and we have loyalty because dogs can be very loyal. And we'll make that equal to zero. So now we have a dog that has all the same items as this pet object here. And we can go local Doberman is equal to dog Jesse. And now we can say Doberman dot breed. And now we can get the breed of this Doberman. And let's while we're at it get Doberman.name. If we now run this, we'll get Jesse, which is a Doberman. Cool. But now we decide here inside of our pet, we want to add another item. We want to add status. And status will be something like hungry. Now, since we want dog to have everything pet has, we now have to remember, and this could be like a ton of objects that could have the same types of items in pet. But now we have to remember, hmm, we have to copy this and we have to go paste it here as well. We have to remember that. 
and a lot of times you'll have five or even more objects that will be inheriting from this object so it will have all of the same items so you will have to remember all of the objects that's using this object so you can go and copy paste all of these here this isn't the way to go instead you should use inheritance inheritance is when you inherit all of the different types of properties in one object and you use it in another. So here we could say local dog is equal to pet and we pass in this name that gets passed into dog. Cool. Now we return dog. And in, instead of creating this object here, we can now just append to this already existing one. So dog dot breed and we can make that equal to this right here. Dog, and then dot loyalty, like that. And then we can remove this part here. And now we have successfully inherited all of the properties that's being returned here. So we get name, we get status, we get speak, and we get feed. We get all of these here. And now we add two more properties onto this property we have, or onto this table we get from this and return that. Now we'll have both the name and the breed even though we didn't copy paste any of these here. If you run this, we'll get the same output. And once we change anything here, so anything here, for example, we can add points for some reason and make that equal to 10. I can now, in my dog, I can access points even though I didn't actually copy paste that data here. We could now also go breed and we could rather pass in the breed or Doberman. So now we could actually go here and say poodle. So now we get a poodle instead. If we run this, we get JC poodle. We can overwrite functions that already exist here as well. For here, we say meow. We could go dog dot speak and speak is a function that takes in self and then instead of saying meow it says woof so now when we go poodle speak it will say woof this is the power of inheritance so we can have a bunch of objects that's inheriting from this object so now we can maybe go here and we can create a cat which has the same type, but this time it maybe doesn't have a breed because it didn't know any cat breeds. It doesn't have loyalty, it doesn't have speak, and here's a cat, and we can go here and say lazy, and that could be cat.lazy is equal to true. So if the cat is lazy or not. Now this cat has all of the items inside of pet, and one more that's lazy. And of course, if you wanted to, you could make cat inherit everything from dog. You just, of course, have to pass in the breed, which I don't know, IDK. And now cat has all of the items inside of dog and the pet, because dog has everything inside of pet. So cat now has everything inside of pet and dog, because cat is inheriting from dog here. And this is the basics of OOP. You might not quite understand everything here yet. But once we get to the game development section of this course, then you'll quickly start to understand the power of object oriented programming and how everything here connects with one another. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. And I will see you all again in the next Lua tutorial.